You're listening to the FM Talk Show, brought to you by CER Facility and Property Management. Keep abreast of the latest industry news and conversations with facility management leaders and practitioners. The FM Talk Show, advancing and promoting the FM industry and profession. Here is your host, Craig Henry. Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, FM Talk Show. We're talking facility management, and it's our little bit to advance the FM industry and profession. Once again, we have our three uh, components. Firstly, the uh, news and commentary. Um, then we have our guests this afternoon, JC Swanepoel. And finally, we'll continue on our road trip. We went up to Guiani the last time. So we'll be continuing from Guiani to uh, Lepalale today. So starting off with some news, you know, as South Africans, and hopefully we have, we, we are having uh, some listeners from overseas, but much in the news has been around the ESCOM uh, Commission of Inquiry. And uh, we know that there have been individuals that have inflicted considerable damage to ESCOM. Now, ESCOM has a particular uh, closeness to me, and the reason for that is that's where I started my, um, my career as an engineer. So after university, you need to become an engineer in training, and uh, I started that training um, with ESCOM at Duva Power Station. So this was in the beginning of 89, so that's more than 30 years ago. So for those who can remember that far back, those were still the years where we were heavy into apartheid. It was still five years before democratic elections. So coming to a place like Witbank, what's it, Emma Lachleni, um, was quite a shock from Cape Town. Um, and in that time, you know, racism was so entrenched, you, uh, you could not stay um, as a black engineer, you could not stay in the township, you had to stay in the contractor's camp. Um, toilets for whites, toilets for blacks, a canteen for whites, a canteen for, uh, for whites, for blacks. But those were the realities. Uh, and it was in that, uh, you know, space that one had to be a social activist and become the best engineer that one possibly can. And I can assure you at that time, and certainly years thereafter, ESCOM has always been uh, the best, amongst the best utilities in the world. So, the state that ESCOM is in is not a matter of a lack of operators, of maintenance artisans, of technicians, of engineers, of varying kinds of specialists. It is simply because of bad leaders uh, that have self-interest as opposed to the interests of the organization. So the minister, our minister Pravin Gordhan, he uh, appointed a technical review team on the 11th of March, and we certainly wish that team well in assisting ESCOM on their recovery. But if there's one thing that I would say is don't for a moment think that ESCOM does not have the know-how and skill to get it right. If the climate, if the leadership is right, we have the people to, to, to turn around ESCOM. Yeah, then a bit of sad news also. What was reported, Group 5, that has um, applied for business rescue. And you know, facilities management is about creating environments. It's about designing, it's about engineering, it's about construction. And of course, Group 5 is one of our, our big construction companies. So, you know, there's, when one reads these things, it's, it's just with uh, a bit of sadness, but let's hope that they can certainly, you know, pull through this and, and continue um, as one of the, the big uh, construction companies in our industry. Then CBRE, which is uh, an American-based um, uh, real estate um, a management company, uh, they've issued or they've, they've done a number of, um, I think they started in 2016, where they sort of researched the trends in the industry and specifically facility management trends. And they published the 2018 uh, research, um, I think it's a, uh, 
late the end of last year, and you can actually download the research from uh, from their website. And a few things that they identified as as sort of the top ten trends. It relates to outsourcing, and I think much of these as certainly in South Africa has, has gone a long way in terms of the outsourcing and the partnering relationships. So as much as, as it's still a trend, it's certainly not, not new in South Africa. The other big trend is integrated property and facility management. And, uh, and this is something which we've spoken of quite often is that companies are starting to look for partners that can bring an integrated um, uh, solution understanding the organization strategy, understanding where the organization is heading in the next 10 years, making sure the FM strategy aligns, how do you design the right environments, how do you build it, how do you operate it, how do you maintain it, and so on. Then they speak a lot about collaboration and partnerships, um, the, the relationship with your partner, your, your service provider is becoming much more strategic. Clients are saying, I need to look at 10, 15 years, and I need to make sure that I'm with the right partner because one would expect that partner to also invest in the right technology and infrastructure such that my business is going to be enabled into the future. And then much also spoken about workplace, uh, and this has featured also for the past few years quite high on the agenda. It's recognized that the workplace environment impacts people's happiness, engagement at work, their productivity, and again, that's the realm of facility management. And finally, digitizing FM. We spoke to one of the winners of the FM Awards last, sorry, two weeks ago. And he shared the, uh, the, the software called, um, what, what is it called now? FM Buildings. Um, and, uh, and just the impact that that is making in their client. And today we're actually gonna continue with that discussion in terms of integrated uh, workplace management systems. So that's just a, a few pointers that, that came to mind, um, you know, observing over the last two weeks. But getting on to our discussion with uh, our industry leader and practitioner, JC Swanepoel. JC is the uh, Chief Business Development Officer for Archibus Solutions South Africa. So we mentioned the name Archibus, but this is not an a Archibus advert. We're talking about integrated workplace management systems. And those of you who have been following the Gartner um, Magic Quadrant, now the Gartner Group does industry research and they, they do research on a number of things. And one of these um, is the integrated workplace management systems. So these are computerized software technology that is used by real estate providers, property managers, facility managers, and uh, they have a four quadrant uh, sort of system where they identify the, 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 the quadrant that you want to be in is the, leader, the leader's quadrant. And that's a quadrant where uh, companies and their related products have proven themselves over many years uh, to have a maturity in the process enablement, the technology that they use and so forth. So, Again, to, uh, just to highlight that this is certainly not restricted to Archibus, but in that leadership quadrant, you'll find uh, products like Archibus, Trimble, Planon, uh, IBM's Tririga, FM Systems, MCS Solutions, and Accruent. So the magic quadrant is not, is not often something that you will easily find, but if you do search it on Google, you will come across it. So, you know, getting on to our discussion, just as that as an intro. So, JC, we've, uh, we've often heard of this term, uh, integrated workplace management systems, you know, and preceding that you've heard of computerized maintenance management systems, then computerized facility management systems. But can you give our listeners just some insight into what is this thing called integrated workplace management systems? Thank Thanks. you, Craig. It's a, first of all, it's about the built environment. Uh, mm. And then secondly, it's, it's, it's about the space of the built environment. Mm. So yeah. if you look different to that, we are all working in space. Yes. Uh, and, and 
if you buy a piece of land, that space, and, and then you have to build on it and break that space into smaller spaces, uh, like, like, a, like a room. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And in that room, you have a lot of assets. Mm. So then what the integrated workplace management system is about is to manage the assets in the space. Uh -huh. yes. and, and, and then it's about the workplace. Yes. You've, you've mentioned it, that the workplace is of the utmost important for, for the worker yes. nowadays. Yes. So uh, I want to actually emphasize that the primary role or the responsibility of a facilities manager mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. to keep the people in the organization productive. Yes. Uh, and and, and if, if there's a light flickering, who do I go to? Yes. You, you know, so I go to the facilities manager. The other thing is that what this IWMS is trying to create is an integrated mm -hmm. workplace. Mm. Now, Integrated workplace cannot exist without data. Yes. So it's getting the data into one singular mm. standardized database. Yes. And, and that's that's the the, the, the thing mm. is to is to get it in one standardized database so that everyone in the organization can work towards that goal. Mm. So mm. if it's it's actually a mindset. Yes. That, that, that's changing in the organization. Uh, we usually use financial systems mm. or, or HR systems yes. or procurement systems, but that is not what the facilities manager mm. is using. Mm. And it's, uh, the day is long past there where there's a call coming in or an email is mm. written on something that's a fault in and go and fix it and not record it. Mm. Because that is one of the problems that we pick up, that the facilities manager cannot actually give history of the maintenance of the equipment. Mm -hmm. And and then then they say they have to write love stories to finance. <laughs> sure. You see, and that is that. So, so in, in short, we, we have to start with the data. Mm. Then we get the, the, the following question, but where do we get the data yes. from? Yes. What I'm, what I'm say, seeing, uh, what I'm saying is that data exists. Mm. It is there. Mm -hmm. We must just go and see what it is yes. and then take that data and put a standard on it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. As we tried at the SABS of yes. the SANS 1752 yes. to standardize that. And that is why we haven't got in South Africa mm. benchmarks. Mm. Because if we've mm. got that in standard, yes. we can benchmark that. Yes. Uh, I've got a, I heard a saying from W. Edwards Deming is to say, without data, you're just an, a person with an opinion. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the problem. Right. Yep. That's the problem mm. that we've, we've all got an opinion mm. of facilities managers. Mm. You, you, you know, and, and that the industry, the digital industry, take us into a newer environment. Yes. So, and, so, yeah. And the interesting you, a point you mentioned about space, and, and maybe one would immediately think of, okay, the space, my workspace, but it, it can actually be applied more broader. Like if, if one walks through, through Santon, perhaps, a pro, you know, you see Santon as a, as a precinct, which is a space. Uh, would the integrated workplace management system be applied even to uh, a more macro space environment, towns, cities, etc.? For sure. Yeah. Um, the if you if you look at that space, it, mm. it actually talks about the infrastructure, yes. uh -huh. the portfolio, yes. the building, mm -hmm. the workplace, yes. uh -huh. and the assets in that yes. place. So yes. that is the integrated environment mm. that mm. the integrated workplace management Prince systems address. address. Mm. So often we hear about the smart cities, and, and again, this is a space where the integrated workplace management also finds relevance uh, in complementing it with, with other technologies around it. And talking about just other technologies, you know, we often hear about this uh, fourth industrial revolution and the internet of things, and then you hear about drones. You know, how should we look at these, these technologies that's coming fast and furious at us 
in relation to integrated workplace management? We, what we as facilities managers are at the moment, we are scared of that. Ah. Uh, and we're not supposed to. Yeah. Because that's where the data sits. Yes. We must get that data uh -huh. in a standard for, format so that we can make sense of mm, it so, mm. and react on it. Yes. So long gone is the Excel spreadsheet. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> so, so you have to get that and you have to get, start somewhere. Yes. And, yes. and, and the somewhere uh. is start, put your assets in a standard. Yes. And there are ample standards in the world for that. Mm. We, we talk ISO 55,000. Yeah. Why don't we adhere to that? Mm. Because it's a start. Yes. I know it's, a, it's a, an implementation of an IWMS system is not a quick and dirty. Mm. It's, it's a mindset yes. and it's a, over a long term that you, the, you will reap the, the, the fruits of that. Yes. Thank you. And I think one of the, you know, We, uh, we were having a discussion, I can't recall exactly with who, but around the internet things. And, and the person was asking, well, what, what is this internet of things? And one of the examples, you know, I used, um, and, and only because we were prompted by a matter, you know, at the workplace around toilet paper. So typically, you know, you have your, uh, your toilet paper holder. And an internet of things could be a little sensor that says, well, the toilet paper has now dropped to one out of uh, the new normal three, and that triggers uh, a works request and goes through the integrated workplace management system into various processes such that, you know, your, your toilet paper is delivered as needed. The, yeah. the, the, the sensors create data for you. Yes. And, and what the system will do is actually up the maturity of the organization. Uh, why I'm saying that? is that there's data it will created by the sensors or the drones or all of those mm. te technologies. Yes. And then that will take it into a task. Yes. And then yes. the task will Ooh, be in the business process. Yeah. And the business process can actually give you information to change your mission. That's, and, that's, and that's where yeah. we, mustn't, we mustn't be scared yeah. for, for, uh, for, for you know, looking for that. Uh, data yeah. and other st stuff because they are there to help us as facilities yeah, managers. Yes. You know, one of the things that uh, I sort of researched, the, the area that I chose when I did my master's was related to computerized facility management systems. And the one thing that struck me as I um, did my research is that the probability of a call it a, 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 a software pro a project, if I may call it that, implementing a new system into the business, the probability of failure is high. And, uh, and there are various reasons for it, but uh, someone that has sort of implemented uh, numerous projects, what, what would you say is, is, is maybe the, the top three success factors in determining a successful implementation, whether it's an integrated workplace management system or any other, what in your experience has been really, really important? It's a, it's small bites. Mm. Uh, it's not a big bang yes. approach. So, yeah. uh, because it's not a financial system that you have to address mm. all of it in one, mm. one go. Mm. Uh, and you can bite that on small chunks. Yes. And, and, and that helps also with the change management, mm. the change management of the organization that they're going through. For example, the IWMS is, is, is the, the five main groups of that is, is for example, real estate they, leasing and portfolio management. Yes. Then it's capital budgeting, mm. uh, uh, capital project management. Yes. Then it's space management. Yes. And then it's, the facilities management and the workplace mm, services. Mm. And then it's the assets and maintenance. Mm. So it's a broad yes. spectrum. So out of that, you can identify, this is the biggest pain point. Yes. Can we rectify right. it? And, and, and don't start buying everything yeah. you, yes. because you will sit with a license. Uh, so it's, it's, it's packaged mm. in a way that it can fit. And you It fit in your organization and you can set a standard. Mm. Plus, it builds in your business processes also in the system. Yes. And you can tweak it. If it's not working, you can tweak it as you go along. Mm. 
Thank you. Now, JC, we'd just like to thank you very much um, just for, for bringing those very important insights. I think at the end of the day, if, I, if, if one would walk away with something is that certainly an integrated workplace management system is, is, a, is a very, very important tool for the facility manager, the organization as a whole for that matter. But we must always look at it as a, um, as a, as a sort of box with potential. Uh, it can do much for you, but but you need to apply your mind and and in a very responsible manner approach it, and and absolutely it will deliver the results. Uh, JC, I've known for for many years, probably well probably well more than ten years, and uh, and he has been quite a, certainly a, a a a regular and and always a, a a individual that has contributed to the facility management community. Uh, JC was with us or part of the, the technical committee, the, the SANS 175 to the development of that standard. So JC, just, you know, from myself and, and really the broader FM industry and community, just to thank you very much. Um, you, are, you are a person that I know if I need something, I can go to it. I know coffee is possible the next day and we can talk and sort out issues and uh, and that's just how I've experienced you over the years. And just thank you for your for your valuable contribution to our to our industry and profession. Thank you. I I want to leave this uh, with the last. Thing. Yes, we've please. talked about Internet of Things. Yes, uh -huh. I would like to brand facilities man uh -huh. management of the Internet of Everything. Ah, yes. Because, because it is that. That yes. is what yes. it is. Absolutely. You know, it's what is fault in this environment yes. of mine. So it's the internet of everything. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You're listening to the FM Talk Show, brought to you by CER Facility and Property Management. CER Facility and Property Management is capable to meet the diverse needs of any organization where the built environment is a core enabler of the organization's strategy and operational performance. CER Facility and Property Management is part of the greater CER ecosystem of people-centered enterprises, focusing on high-performance facilities and physical assets and range from advisory to operational services and over the life cycle of the built environment from portfolio strategy, design, construction, occupational readiness, operations and repurposing. CER Facility and Property Management. Built environment for human flourishing. <laughs> Yes, 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 you got brands talking. Brandlife.co.za Right, welcome back and once again, thank you to JC. And we are now continuing with our storytelling. Uh, for those who have not been following, I uh, undertook a journey which was about 7,200 kilometers, 12 days circumnavigating South Africa. So that started Pretoria, heading to Nalspreit, and then northwards along the border of the country, down the west coast, Cape Town, up the southern east coast, back to Pretoria. So where we, we left off the last time was uh, I overnighted at Guiani. I was supposed to have gone through to uh, Pafuri, but uh, as things went, it, it was already dark, so it was not advisable to continue further. And you know, that reminds me of um, one of the rules, certainly with motorbiking, and that is that you always need to do everything to ensure success. <clears throat> and in fact, that applies to life in general. I remember when I was uh, a journey that I undertook also, one that was uh, uh, on the sort of one sticking list is to, is to do the Sani Pass from the South African side. And if you've read anything about it, um, whatever you read, it just says, okay, this is a challenge. So I thought I need to do this challenge. And, um, and we headed for the Sani Pass. I got, it, it, is, it is great, no problem, you know, about 99% of the way. And then the last way is where the gradient just changes to like 45 degrees and it's these constant zigzag yepping bends. And at a point I lost my momentum. And this is the second rule of motorbiking. 
momentum is your friend. If you lose momentum, you will fall. And I fell. So, you know, I had to get the bike back up. And then I had to now decide, you know, another worst thing is trying to get going on a motorbike on gravel on an incline. Traction, all kinds of things. So I decided, okay, let's apply the first rule. Let's see if we can get a increase our chance of success. So I decided let's walk up the uh, uh, a section so that I can just get the the route because once you can't see what's coming around the corner, it's difficult to to to, to plot your line. So we we walked up the stretch and then walked back to the bike and then got going. So we got to the top. So the point just you know do whatever you need to do to uh, achieve success. Yeah. So we went on to uh, Musina um, and. Gee, what what is what was particularly sad? Let me use the word. Yeah, okay, sad is fine. So everyone, uh, and and particularly our um, our um, Zimbabwean uh, counterparts, you know, on their way back back home, you know, for the uh, for the year end break, and it's it's like a, a war zone, you know, Bucky's trailers. Ever so often, another Bucky's down. Something's failed. Trailer. And, and so you just see this this the scene as you as you move towards Messina. Uh, got to Messina, I was supposed to have got gotten uh, to the border post and then gotten onto the gravel road, but there was like a it's like a queue of vehicles um, that I couldn't actually see the end of. So I thought, okay, no, nah, I'm not going to try this way. So we went back and then followed the the R572. Um, to all days, Swartwater, um, with the goal of getting to Lepalale. That's where we overnighted. So on your way to Swartwater, you know, you get these uh, all familiar signs about beware of the potholes. But you know that those signs were no longer appropriate because potholes was not the appropriate word anymore. It was more, this is now a gravel road. This is now moved. Asphalt is no more. It was once there. So it reminds you of, you know, these movies when you go and watch a movie and uh, and it's like 100 years into the future or 50 years into the future and, uh, and nature has reclaimed like the urban setting. That's like the kind of scene. is like a road that's just like disappearing into the ground. That's bad, okay? Because when, when you allow a road infrastructure and it's no little, uh, different to a facility, if you allow that asset to degrade to the extent that it is, you cannot maintain it back to its 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 rightful place. You have to replace it. Um, you know, and this was on the route to the um, Mapungubwe Park, and I know that wasn't a great pronunciation, but you know, we have beautiful places to visit. But if the roads cannot um, enable one to visit you know everything becomes compromised we we don't um we're not able to 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 leverage the tourism potential things of of that nature beautiful area you know boabab trees um park my bike next to one basically the base of the tree was like three times the length of of my bike wheel to wheel um and it's quite strange it's you know at a a certain time you start to see it and then in a short space of time not again so it's like a very specific area uh, past Tom Burke and there's a photovoltaic uh, power plant that was developed in 2017 and this is one of the things that you also realize as you travel through is that we just have land and sunlight and the potential for photovoltaic or solar generated um, power is is absolutely immense and we should you know exploit that further so yeah then eventually got into uh, Lepalale so stayed over at Lepalale and then from there um, the next day headed north um, to Stienbokpan gravel road following the the border uh, towards Zeras then Maiken and then to Freyet, Freybach, sorry, that's where we overnighted. So we'll continue with, uh, with that journey um, in two weeks' time. So thank you again very much for, for joining us and uh, look forward to talking to you again in, in another two weeks. Thank you. 
You, you have been listening to Craig Henry on the FM Talk Show, brought to you by CER, Facility and Property Management. Tune in every second and last Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. Podcasts are available on www.cerecosystem.com.